Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is your girl Mitzi, and this is Mitzi. Let's think about it. Today, we are thinking about dream empowerment. Yes, I had the pleasure of getting Megan back on my show. Yes, because we need to talk really about this, these dreams again in a thorough, more specific way. So I had to bring her back. So thank you so much again, Megan, for coming on my show. So dream empowerment. Hmm. Tell me more. What does it really make you think? I know you 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 dabbed into it last time, but I really want to know from someone who's this is your specialty, you know. But so, what does that really mean to you when someone just brings it up or you hear it around? You know, does your ear like stick up and be like, hmm, I'm curious to know what you're gonna say. I mean, tell me, Megan. Yes, thank you for having me on again, Mitzi. It's a pleasure and. Yeah, I think, um, I don't know, but I think I invented this term. I kind of came up with it because I feel like it is, it helps people better understand why do dream analysis? Because some people just think of it as a parlor trick or sort of like looking up your horoscope and don't really understand that it actually is a path to empowerment and that you really can experience what I believe is a spiritual transformation by doing the dream work. And so when I say dream empowerment, that's really what I think is the ultimate end goal of doing the inner work of the dream work. Hmm. Yeah. You got to do the inner work, but you know, what really is the inner work? I mean, because once you have the dream, if you don't really write it down right away, like we spoke about before having that dream journal, you know, you will lose it. So if you're in the moment of the dream and you don't have your pen and paper, you know, is repeating it or just going over your dream over and over again, is that a, a, a good way to have that type of um, remembering? I mean, if that makes sense. It is a good method for dream recall to try and remember it, yes. So if you don't have your pen and paper handy, you don't wanna get up, you don't have a way to do it, then I would definitely try to repeat it to yourself. Try to find grasp just a couple words um, to help you remember just the content of the dream so that once you are at, at your phone or a pen and paper, then you can actually try to unravel what those two words you were able to hold on to meant yes I think that is a great way yeah most definitely try to write that down and I'm curious because I was looking up quotes I mean as always because you know I'm the quote fanatic um so I've seen one that says dreams are as simple or as complicated as the dream so what mm. does that make you think about when yeah. you hear that I love that it really is all about the dreamer and that quote so eloquently underscores the work that I do in the way, the specific way that I do it, because I really put all of the power back on the dreamer. I don't want to act like a dream dictionary and say, well, it just means this for everybody. It's really what it means to the dreamer. And so how complex or how simple your life has been, how complex or simple your experiences have been, how complex or simple your subconscious is, is going to dictate how complex or simple your dreams are. And, and some people just don't think they don't remember them, can only remember little parts, and other people could talk to you for 40 minutes about one dream. So that, and I also think it has something to do with personality too. I've heard um, of scientific studies, which I found were really fascinating about that certain personalities are more willing to do the dream work, more willing to open themselves up to the possibilities of the dream world and seriously consider what it might hold for them. Whereas certain other personalities just might discard that more easily. That's good. Those are good points. And I'm glad you brought that up because I was just going to say some people are very rejected or very, very subjective, I guess, if that's the right word too, um, because of their growing up and their personality as well and all of that. So you brought up some really good points because your experience is very much going to be different, you know, but I have heard like sometimes those simple minded people would get those extravagant dreams to kind of wake them up. You know, because there's been, you know, I think we talked on this last time, but I'm not quite sure um, where 
like you can kind of tell the future you know what I mean sometimes dreams can mm -hmm. warn you and 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 kind of protect you and you know um give you that foresight into what could possibly be coming if you continue on the right tracks or if you switch something up you know and that's the thing if your mind is so simple and you can't understand this extravagant dream at the time and you oh, so sadly go to a dream dictionary you're gonna really get lost in yes. what's gonna happen and they can confuse people I mean have you gotten clients that just came to you just completely confused and was just like this is what I thought but this mm -hmm. is what I feel but this is I don't know oh absolutely. I mean yeah absolutely either one they say well I think I know what it means and they're already kind of cutting themselves off at, at the you know at the start before they even get to really unravel it or they say well I, you know, I looked it up and it said this. And so it's that, right? I mean, I don't know. Or that didn't, that doesn't resonate with me. So I don't get it. Yes. That's, that's a good way to say it. Yeah. It doesn't resonate with me. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. That's a very good one because a lot and of And what is resonance? Are, yeah. Yeah. It's frequency. What is it? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's exactly. I mean, we're right there, Megan, we're right there because <laughs> it's so funny because once somebody decides it doesn't resonate with them, they can completely reject it. And they say, oh, well, my soul told me to reject it. Like, mm, is it, is it really your soul or is it really just the fact that you don't want to receive the message? You right, know, that's which, my opinion. What yes, I mean, what about you? Which is you? the ego. It's not the soul. Yeah, it's ego. the self- Thank you. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about the ego enough because they feel like, oh, I'm so spiritual. I could tap in. I'm so kumbaya, you know, but it's not like that. You know, our ego yeah. sneaks in there like a little yes. right it's there. It's a self-protective and mechanism and that's what it's there for. But, you know, it's part of the personality and it's, we don't want to have things be destabilized from the egoic persona that we believe we are. Yeah. and we don't have control over the subconscious. So when we wake up and we say, well, I had this dream that this, 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 and people look at us funny and it's like, well, what? I didn't, I didn't make that happen. It's just happened. You don't have any control over it unless of course you're lucid dreaming. But the point is that it's not, um, it's something that a lot of people feel embarrassed about, ashamed about. Um, they, they don't appreciate their dreams and they don't want to share them and they don't want to talk about them because they think it's embarrassing. And so they're just holding themselves up when they say that they're just saying, well, I don't, I know what they mean, or I don't need to do that work or I, you know, um, or, or mine don't mean anything. That's all very, you know, the ego saying, stepping in between you and the spirit and saying, no, no, we don't need that. We don't need to listen to that. Look the other way. Never mind the man behind the curtain. Exactly. Exactly. Perfectly stated. Perfectly stated. Because I think that's one thing that people are needing to realize. Like you can, you can be working on your, on your, on yourself, but man, when that ego steps in, you got to recognize it. You know what I mean? Because it, we all, we all, we all sometimes let it just take over. I have my, I have my moments too. And you feel your blood boiling, but then you have to like take a second and remember like, no, you don't have to feel embarrassed. You don't have to feel ashamed. You don't have to feel guilty. You don't have to feel bad for what you dreamt or what you see in that moment. You know what I mean? Because in that moment, I feel like it's made specifically for you. You know what I'm saying? And, and and that's why I think um one of the other quotes that um I seen was kind of like how we talked about, but it says dreams can see into the future. So with that statement, I mean I know we kind of spoke on it a little bit, but like what does that really mean to you? I mean, have you ever had a moment where you've seen your future in in your in your own dreams? Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's what brought me here actually. <laughs> <laughs> look at us <laughs> yes I mean I and I I was just actually told this story on another podcast yesterday um that I had this dream where this woman um and I perceived her to be a life coach but I at the time I really didn't know much about life coaching but I kind of figured she was that kind of person like a guide or someone and uh we were walking into an auditorium and she was holding the door to the auditorium and she said are you ready 
and we were supposed to go on early apparently and she opened the door and we walked in and everyone in the auditorium stood up and was clapping for us and she said I know everything about you and it just really that moment was so defining to me like this my audience is waiting <laughs> like I have to go do this and so I really think when when we talk about dreams being prophetic, certainly they can be. But what I want to present to to really kind of turn it a little bit further is that dreams don't have to worry about time and space. There is no time and space when it comes to dreams. They're not linear. They're not trapped in this 3D reality. So what our conception of future is just a illusion because of our linear quote unquote reality. Yeah. yeah. So when we receive information in our dreams and we experience things that we think, oh, that already happened or that's going to happen. Well, that's just because our brains can't process that everything is actually all happening at once. It's a very existential um, concept. But when you start to tap into that idea, then you realize, oh, okay, well, well, yeah, they are then, but it's actually just not, it can't, it's not explained in that manner, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I mean, it makes sense because it's hard to explain in, in general, you know what I mean? Because once you're experiencing the moment, you kind of realize like, oh, time isn't linear, time isn't what we know, because... I had that dream yesterday and it's happening today or I had that dream seven years ago and look at it appearing to me now. So, or it's, it just. Hi, I don't hey. know what happened. That's you froze. Weird. Yeah. But I guess we both <laughs> you got froze. trapped in a different reality. I, I know. Look at that. It happened in broad daylight, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that is, that is so crazy that it happened, but I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Um, so I guess we're just going to move forward because yeah. I kind of lost my train of thought and I was just yeah. in the middle of talking. So it's OK. Yeah. But I wanted to bring back um, manifesting dreams. You spoke very yes. little about it last time when you were going through the four stages. OK. And I really want to see if you could dive more into that. Because mm -hmm. I want to see. I feel like when you manifest your dreams, you really can empower your dreams. Yes. Am I right? Is that, I mean, I feel like that's a big part of this dream empowerment process. Is that it also is. Yes. the manifesting portion of it? Correct. So dream manifestation or dream incubation, they're both kind of the same thing, is when you put an intention down in your mind or in your journal to have a certain type of dream or to perhaps re-enter a dream and have there be an alternate ending. And that it can be a very healing and empowering process because it'll, it allows you to feel that you have some agency in your, let's just say spiritual trajectory, right? So one of the ways you can do that when you keep a dream journal is before you go to bed, write down what it is that you want to dream about because the power of intention and the power of the mind it cannot be underscored. So it, it's very, it's very important to understand that you have the ability to do this. It's also one of the ways that we can start to activate lucidity is to simply create a habit of thinking to yourself and almost like a mantra or, or writing it down, that you are going to have a certain type of dream. When you continually put your mind to it, your mind is thinking about it as you fall asleep. And it will eventually transfer to the dream state and to the dream world and to the content of the dream world. So uh, one of the applications of this can be if you have a problem that you want to solve, for example. So maybe you're having a, a writer's block. Okay. And so this is great for writers. You immerse yourself in whatever it is that you're having an issue with. So if you're having an issue with what happens next in your book and you're, you read it right before you go to bed so that that is active in your mind as you go to sleep your mind is gonna start working on what happens next. If you um, 
you're working on a project and, or, and you need a new creative idea, um, you know, ask for that as you go to sleep. What, what should I name this new program or what's a new way that I can interact with my audience or what's a new project that I can propose at work, whatever it is. And have the intention of that. Ask your higher self that. And you'll get the answers in your dreams. Now, they might not be as obvious as you think. It's not going to be, I heard your call and here's the answer to your project. But you have to learn how to decode the, the story of the dream to get the message. Yes, that's very true. You really do have to decode it because sometimes they go by fast. You know what I mean? You can be mm-hmm. in one dream and before you know it, you're already in another dream and before you know mm-hmm. it, you're in another dream. And if people aren't careful, then you can really get lost in between dreams. And that's why decoding it is the best part because if you can pick up the pieces, there's always going to be some type of pattern, you know what I mean? Yes. Or some, some something that's going to be sticking out because when you replay it in your mind or you write it down and you go to it when you're free-minded you know when you're clear and you're ready to receive it again you know you're able to really see like oh okay this I could circle it you know what I mean you can see that pattern and see what does it really mean to me and ask yourself hmm, these hard questions because people need to ask themselves these these hard questions because it's basically your, your inner self telling you okay this is how we're going to do this project this is how we're going to do this book. This is how we're going to do this situation in our lives, a relationship issue or whatever the case may be. You know, even finances, it helps you along the way. Even enemies, you know, I mean, your dreams can warn you of enemies coming your way without you even realizing you, you're having enemies. You know, like I've had dreams that have protected me and my family from moving into houses that were cursed and we were going to experience hell and back. But because... I paid attention to all the details in my dreams. My mom, when she came back with my stepdad and described the house, I was like, you can't get that house. I literally just had a dream about that house the other night. And the way she described it, she even laid it out for me. I was like, this is the exact house. I was Mm. like, please do not get this house. So Mm. then later on, the real estate came to her and said that, yeah, a child died in that house and in my dream I was getting tormented by a child and it was tormenting my dog so mm. I know it was mm. crazy so I like kind of helped the situation and so I I I, I stand strong I stand strong with the it, it warns you in the future because I'm telling you I've I've, I've experienced things that only in only only in my dreams to be honest only in my dreams it's like crazy because I remember one time I had a dream I didn't even it wasn't even intentional I was just I was tired fell asleep and I had a dream that I was helping detectives find a case for a child you know there was missing children and I had to help them find these children's and every time I, I looked the people were gone with this these children so then I woke up went to the bathroom and I was about to close the turn off the light and go to my room but as soon as I I was about to turn off the light I seen a kid all in white and was pointing at the mirror and I turned and and I switched off the light not realizing like oh snap and I turned it on and it was gone and I and I looked at the mirror and it was a, a circle with a star in it yeah so then when I went back to sleep I ended up going right back into the dream and I ended up finding the, the the kids in a warehouse around a circle at the points of the stars, all dressed in white. So I was just like, yeah. that dream always sticks with me to this day. I will mm-hmm. I will always recall that dream forever because that right there kind of it changed my perspective on dreaming and what dreams can can do. You know what I mean? Like. Mm. It's a very powerful, you know, story or I mean, experience, and it it really speaks to how I feel the dream world is a conduit to the spirit world. Yes, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yes, that's exactly what I say, and people don't realize that sometimes. In my personal opinion, I feel like sometimes it leads you to different to different realms yes you know what I mean? different different lives that we've lived before or after or in a different time zone that we just don't comprehend 
And we don't realize that sometimes we can help in a different area, in a different time. That's not our own. You know what I mean? Because maybe yes. at that moment I was there to help, but I ended up helping it too, too short, you know, unfortunately, but we still found the children. So I guess that's a good thing. But I mean, I don't know. And I mean, sometimes talking to this to some, I have never really told that dream to anybody, to be honest, but I feel comfortable talking to you. And I guess now sharing it with the world, but I feel comfortable <laughs> talking to you because, you know, I mean, you, I, I feel know like that we, happens. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yes. I mean, we yes. get it. Yes, we get it. So that, I mean, so it's very comforting. I mean, from your opinion, from what I said, I mean, what else do you think about? Well, I appreciate the authenticity of, of sharing that. I think that, that when you do that, that that's what everyone, that's when everyone says, you know, I have this dream. And then that's where the sharing starts. When yeah. you become vulnerable and you say, you know what, I had this experience and I don't know what to make of it. And you finally come out into the public and say it. That is what is the most powerful because then everyone all of a sudden, mm, what do they want to do? They want to share theirs. And, and, and when you do that, that's when we start to kind of just break down those blockages that are happening, that are keeping us from sharing this and also keeping us from looking at it ourselves. Yes. So, you know, it's very, um, that's why I feel like it, dream work is this doorway. I often call it, call it a portal or a catalyst because it allows us to really um, integrate parts of ourselves as well as connect with others in a way that we would not be possible without sharing that experience. Exactly. I really like that. Oh, I know time is getting the best of us. So I am so sad that we have to wrap up the show i megan we're gonna have to come have you come back i swear we're <laughs> gonna be a three part to have more talks about dreams because yes. that last statement really sticks and i hope the audience really listens and takes note onto that share your dreams share your experiences don't hold it back because you know what you don't know who you may be connecting with that you don't even realize you're connecting with and that's the beauty yes. of life is that we're all intertangled some way somehow so yep. with, with that so being true. said, always be thinking y'all take care. Bye.